So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I built this bot press Airbnb bot that not only answers all the users questions, but has two additional features that I'm using with Zapier. So the first one is it's gonna send any unanswered questions to a Google spreadsheet so they can later be added in into the knowledge base. And also I'm doing some emergency analysis to understand if there is an emergency at the property and whether the actual owner should be notified via SMS or email. So in today's video, and I'm also gonna give away this template to you guys for free. So the first thing I'd like to just go over quickly, why BotPress, right? BotPress is a no-code tool pretty much anyone can learn very quickly within a day. The reason why I would use a BotPress for this sort of a bot is because it's fairly simple and it's a very good method to build a quick prototype. So if you have a look at the, the, the pros here of using no-code tools, number one is it's super simple, anyone can really get and do it you don't need to be technical and it's very good for quick prototyping and sort of the last thing i'd like to mention is when you're thinking about what you should do if you should custom code or use bot press you've got to understand about service delivery if you custom code it you need to now do the service delivery on that side so that means you know your web application hosting multi-user single user you need to take care of all of that not just actually building the code that works and that can take a lot of time whereas bot press does all the hosting all the routing for you but back to this bot let's go over this fairly quickly so we've got a, a welcome node so this has a simple text text element and the way these nodes work they work in a descending order so they will do the first card first and then the second card and the third card so we send this welcome message and then we just do an always, right? So this is just a true condition saying that all, you know, when, the, when we hit this, we're always moving on to the next node. Now we're doing a check knowledge. So we're doing a user input. So I always like to do user inputs rather than just letting them input. I like to capture exactly what the, the input is. That way we can do AI tasks like I'll show you here in a second. What you need to make sure here is they will start on single choice. You need to come down here and you need to hit raw input. Otherwise, with inputs, what they do, if they don't get the required input, so say you can set this to a phone number, if you, a user writes a question, it will then ask them the input again. It will keep asking them again and again and again. You can set also advanced configurations to show how many times you want this to be asked. But that is somewhere that a lot of people struggle with, with BotPress. So set that to raw input, that means just anything will get put into this variable. So if they ask a certain question, this is also a knowledge node. So we've enabled knowledge answering. And if we come to our knowledge base, I've just basically uploaded a Airbnb docs. So this is all the information on the property. And then I'm doing an emergency check and routing off if there is an emergency. I will get onto this at the end. So say if there is not an emergency, basically we have these two, these two movement nodes. So you're always should always be at the end because if I move this always up here, it doesn't matter as you can see these turn yellow because they're never gonna hit, right? So you always should be the last, the last transition. So we've got no answer from knowledge base. So if the knowledge agent hasn't responded, that means that it hasn't found a question, right? We're gonna say, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer to that. And I've just said this question will be logged in a spreadsheet just to demo the purposes. So what we're going to do is we actually want to log these messages so that eventually the Airbnb owner can keep filling out these messages to then start getting a more complete knowledge base. So they have to answer less messages over time. So what we're doing here is we're setting up a Zapier webhook. So this is the code. It's pretty simple. We set up a webhook. So this is going to be your Zapier webhook, and I'll show you how to do this in a second. And then we send the payload. So we send the message. So this is why it's important to capture it. So it's workflow.user input. This is my variable where I save their input. And then we just send a timestamp as well. And then we post this to the Zapier webhook. So what does the webhook actually look like? Okay, so the Zapier automation is super simple. It's just a webhook going into a spreadsheet. So you wanna come in here, put a webhook, you wanna do a catch hook, continue, you don't need to do any of this, and then you wanna do a test, right? So this will be your webhook URL. Let's just turn that on. So you wanna copy this URL here, and this is the URL that you will paste in to your webhook URL. 
Then you need to come here and do a test. So let's say, hey, is there anything that can help you? What is a banana? It's not going to know that. So here we go. I'm sorry, I don't have an answer to this question. This question has been logged in the spreadsheet. So we come here, we hit find new records. There we go. What is a banana? So this has hit the webhook. We're going to continue with this selected record. So now we're going to do the Google Sheets. So we're going to say we're going to create a spreadsheet row. You put in your account, the drive, what the spreadsheet is, the spreadsheet worksheet. And then my spreadsheet, my spreadsheet here has two headings, a message and a timestamp. So you can fill in exactly the fields. So this is why we're sending the message and the timestamp. You hit continue and then we can retest this action. So now if we come here, there we go. It's pasted into this spreadsheet. What is Badana? And it gives us our timestamp. So this is a really simple way of just of logging all of the user messages. And you can do this now with anything. If you're collecting phone numbers, if you're collecting emails, you can use this Zapier webhook to send to a Google Sheets. And then it returns always and it comes down to the second node. The second node is basically a clone of this first node, but basically it's just a sort of a secondary question. So let me know if there's anything else you can help with instead of just keeping asking what I can help with. It's just a nice sort of follow-up question. So it's basically the same. It's a knowledge node. It does an emergency check if the user says no. So if their intent is no, and let's just go over intents really quickly. So intents are here and you can do intents for anything, you know, intents for buy, whatever. Basically, what are intents? Intents are, as it says, what does the user intend to do? And these are a list, but it's not the finite list of what a reply. So if they reply this, this is going to come into this intent. So if they reply, I don't want to, absolutely not. No, nah, no, no. But it's not going to be limited to these eight. Basically, what you're doing here is you're telling the AI what the intent should look like, right? So if they misspell nope or misspell not really with like one L, it still understands, oh, okay, they're probably wanting this intent. So the more you fill out here, the more specific your intent is, the more the AI is going to know. So if we do an intent, so nah and then conversation ended okay and if it's a no answer so if the knowledge base responded we're going to go back and we're going to send that message again to the zapier worksheet and on always this is just a fallback we're going to end the conversation so let's talk about this emergency thing so what we're doing here is we're doing an ai task and this is basically where you have task instructions and you're sending it to gpt 3.5 or 4 with a certain input and you're going to get a response back. So here you are going to look at this message and determine if there is an emergency or something serious that the owner of the property should be alerted to. So for the examples, so I've just put for examples when there's, you know, a fire or I have broken X object and then we pass in the user input and then we have like a task example as well. Really, you can put this sort of either way. It all just gets put into one prompt anyway. And then in the advanced settings, you can. this is where you can change your model. So we're basically telling it to respond with yes, if there is an emergency or no, there's not. And that is going to go into this workflow.emergency Boolean, right? So it's going to, the AI is also going to map this yes and no to the yes and no's of the Boolean. So we're going to check if there is an emergency. So if emergency is set to true, we're going to come up to this emergency emergency node. So again, we do a Zapier webhook, but here we're going to send the entire conversation. So we're going to send, let's go that. We're going to send the entire conversation. So you get that by event.state.session.history. And then you want to give the summary as well. So we're, you can use the summary agent to give just a summary of what's going on. And then we send it the latest message. So if we come into Zapier, it's exactly the same. So you want to get your webhook and put that into the code. Let's let's generate an emergency. Hi, there is a flood in the house. So hopefully it will pick it up as an emergency. This is an emergency. There we go. So it's also given like the, the knowledge what, what you should do in the flood. And then it's saying I've set this up as well. So to please call the emergency number. And I've determined that the owner of the property should know. So this if we find new records, we should get a new record here. 
yep, we got a new record. Continue with selected record. And then we're going to send it to an email, but you can also do SMS. You could integrate it into our CRM, however you want to notify the owner. So we're just doing outbound message, right? So the subject, the bot has determined emergency, and we're going to do the latest message as the subject of the email, and then the body, we're going to send the entire conversation. So let's continue. Let's retest this action. So it's come, it's coming to spam, but it's because it's from like this strange email. So your email address is going to pick it up spam, but you can set it to get to, to set it into inbox from this email address. And then it gives you the entire conversation history. So they've got a better understanding of what exactly is going on. So this is you. This is super helpful. Obviously, the owner of Airbnb isn't going to want to be called up every time there's like not an emergency. So sending them a message and then they, they can check whether they want to follow up or not follow up. Yeah, and basically here, so we're just telling them here, here's the emergency number. You can set this up depending on what your Airbnb host wants. And then also telling the user that they, they have been contacted. And now I'm just always, we're coming back into this second node asking if there's anything else they need. So this is a really simple Airbnb bot, but something like this can save Airbnb property owners countless hours having to deal with loads and loads of requests all the time and also get direct feedback on what's going on in the conversation. And something like this, you can either do it through, you can host it through a website or you can put it into a WhatsApp or Telegram. So, and then when someone checks into your to the client's property, you can just give them a WhatsApp number to connect to and then they will initiate a conversation with the bot. So I hope you enjoyed this. I will leave a link to the bot template below. Also, if you would like to work with me, I've got my email, or if you want to book an hour of my time, I've got a place that you can book that too.